Hello there, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to use keyframes in Premiere Pro. This tutorial will be very good for beginners because I'm going to be going through the very basics of keyframes and how to do them, what they are used for, and so on and so forth. Let's jump right into it, folks, and uh, just do this right now. So, here we are. The first thing you want to do is open Premiere Pro. Once you've opened Premiere Pro, you want to make sure that you drag in your footage right into the timeline. If you don't know how to do any of that, you can check out my absolute beginner's guide to Premiere Pro. Now, why would you want keyframes? Allow me to explain. As you can see here, I have a clip of me walking down the path. Now, what if I wanted the camera to follow me as I went down the path, but I don't have the budget to have my camera on wheels following me or a person pushing that camera? Well, keyframes gives you a bit of a workaround. Now, once you select your clip, you'll notice all these tools pop up over here. If they haven't, just make sure that you are over at editing. That's where you'll get all of this. To create a keyframe, you need to use this. This is usually not blue, but I selected it before for some reason. <laughs> okay, once you select it, you'll notice a diamond appear. Now, a diamond will appear there and a diamond will appear here. This little section is what's on your clip. It's the same timeline from the end to the beginning of your clip, right over there. Now, when you select that, it creates a keyframe. That little diamond over there is your first keyframe. Now, if you want it to zoom in slowly, you want to go a little further and you want to increase the scale, which will create another keyframe as such. Okay, now what Premiere Pro does is it processes all the frames between these two keyframes. So there's this slow zoom that will happen, as you can see. Now that creates a very slow zoom there. And what you can do as well is click and drag these around and edit it just the way you would. So maybe you want it to be a little more dramatic, so you want it to be a little faster. And there's a quick zoom. And perhaps you want it to be a much longer zoom. Well, you can do that too. There's another thing you can do here. You'll see these arrows. That is so you can quickly jump between the between the keyframes. So if we jump here, let's create a little more of zoom here. Now, if I play, you'll notice the zoom is a lot more slower. That's because there's more time between the two keyframes. And the other thing about this is it's zooming into this area here. But say that I wanted to follow me on the path. Well, then I'll need to create another keyframe on the same clip and I'll need to use the position for that. The position, as you can see, have a vertical and horizontal number. Once you click the keyframe, it keyframes both of those together. Now, if we go right to the other keyframe here, what we want to do is Make sure that I'm in the center. That we do just by dragging the horizontal and the vertical axis right over there. So let's see how this looks once we play it. Look at that. It's like it's following me. And I didn't even have to pay for anything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so 
The next thing you can use keyframes for is audio. And actually, you can use keyframes for pretty much everything. It's one of the basics that you were using in animation, but in Premiere Pro, it's also very useful. Say if you need a slow zoom into a picture, a still image that you just want to make it a little more interesting, it's great for that. Or perhaps you want to slow fade out and you don't want to use one of these lovely transitions, you can do that just by selecting the opacity and creating a keyframe for the opacity of your clip. It's very easy. You can pretty much do anything and everything with keyframes. It's very useful, very awesome. Okay, let's look at the audio here. Okay, so when it comes to audio, you can do two things. You could say you want the audio to be a little softer here. You could simply cut the audio right out of that section there. And let's do that. Unmute it and see how that works. See how drastic that is. It simply cuts off. But say I wanted the audio to kind of fade off. Then what I would do is select the audio, create a keyframe. Yours might look like this. Select the volume and then you'll notice that with audio, these blue clocks all these clocks are already blue i don't know why that is but if you want to create a keyframe simply select the little diamond over there to add a keyframe to the levels you select it as such there's our first little keyframe we go a little further say around here we want the music to slowly dip just be a little softer perhaps or just completely softer and then we want the music to slowly increase once again for whatever reason. But say we want it to be the same as that first level. All you have to do is control or command C and then control or command B. And that copies that keyframe over there. Now, let's give it a listen. See how it dips up and back again. See, very useful. And you'll also notice on your timeline, if your timeline doesn't show this, it might be, you might have to just zoom in there. So just alt and scroll your mouse wheel. You'll see this little line here. These are also your keyframes. So you can actually select and edit them just as you might want to over here. So very useful, very easy. Maybe not as exact as editing it over there, but it's nice to have as well. So there you have it, keyframes and how to use them and when to use them and why to use them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked, please do like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will most certainly see you on the next one. Goodbye.